Three deaths, all leading back to the law firm of Banks and Bauer. Is it just me, or is this starting to smell like a John Grisham novel? A single car accident with no witnesses? Guys, this is a classic conspiracy cover-up. Though only a lowly intern, Pam stumbles onto something the firm is doing. Something big, nefarious. She has to be silenced only after the accident. Blaylock can't take the guilt or admit the truth. So his only bastion is to escape into the sweet oblivion of drugs. And then when Erica starts coming around, they realize that they're going to have to act by eliminating them both. But what are they covering up? Whatever it is, the only possible evidence is on Erica's laptop, which our killer took. Yeah. Wait, are we sure about that? Erica was meeting Blaylock on the roof, right? A guy who, according to the email, she didn't know very well. If I'm Erica, I'm hiding that laptop. Well, we searched the room. It wasn't there. Wait, do you guys remember the footage from the elevator? Yes. She went down to the laundry room first. And Lainey said that she found traces of creosote under her fingernails from the boiler room next door. The, the laptop's, laptop's in the basement. basement. Friends, thank you for coming on such short notice. Once times like these, I'm reminded of Shakespeare, who wrote, it's not in the stars. Ah, uh, uh, he also said brevity is the soul of wit, so get to it, darling. Yeah, okay. We just returned from the Hamptons, and we, we got, got married. married. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Looks like Lance managed to vanquish his nemesis after all. An ending worthy of one of his movies. You know, maybe we should watch Hard Kill tonight in his honor. I was just going to suggest the exact same thing. We're starting to think alike now. That is horrifying. OK, uh, go queue up the movie, open up a bottle of wine. I'll be home in a bit. I've just got to stop to make first. Well, if I'm thinking what you're thinking, and it's to pick up a sexy archaeologist costume, don't worry. I've already got the whip. Well, hey there. You're home early. Hey, I couldn't wait to see you. So I picked up a bottle of wine on the way home. It's your favorite. Oh, that is such a big glass. What's the occasion? No occasion. I just figured this would be a great way for you to unwind after a long day at work. Oh, that's so nice. And where's your glass? Eyes are over there. <laughs> well, why don't we top that off for you, shall we? Once, uh... We get all nice and relaxed, unwind. You can tell me all about your day. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're not trying to ply me with wine to find out what I know about this case, are you? Of course not. That's not what you're trying to do, is it? No. OK. Because if you were trying to find out what I know, that would mean you're stuck. I am not stuck. Good. Because I'm not stuck either. So you, so do, you do know, know something. something. Maybe. Maybe. All right, this is crazy. If we both have something, why don't we just trade? Castle, I can't. You know that. Oh, can't. What happened to that rebellious girl with a leather jacket and the motorcycle? Would she say can't? <sighs> she enforces the law now and drinks expensive wine. Then think about our victim. Are you really going to let a couple of silly rules stand in the way of bringing Shayna justice? OK, fine. We'll do it just this once, for her. You, you first. first. We'll go at the same time. Ready? Yeah. She Shana was looking into old, old police records at Radnor University. University. Wait, she had an old boyfriend who died at Radnor University? How long ago? 15 years. His name was Jeff Whalen. He drank too much at a party and fell out a window. If she was looking into old police records. And interested in homicide law. She must have thought that his death was more than just an accident. She was investigating a murder. And somehow that got her killed. Oh my god, I missed this. <gasps> oh my god. 